I've come to the realization what? that I... You? This might sound a bit egotistic. From you? <laughs> From you? What? I am the best yeah. in the world. I'm the best air passenger. You're the best passenger. I'm the best passenger. What about me? I have... I don't know how you fly. You're probably well, you quite fussy. We're both good. Are we Is tight? this passenger of an airplane or passenger of a car? Of a plane. Just like I've never caused any flight attendant any issue. I basically got on, silently like put my stuff away, sat down, and just done the flight and got off. And nobody's had to deal with it. Do you me. ever ask for drinks? No. Never. I don't ever ring. I've never rung the call button. But I took three flights recently. Each of them went across the Atlantic Ocean. Brag about it. And <laughs> And I got hit every single time by a new. Oh! <laughs> 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 Sorry, Bernie <Bernie-Gram laughs> grabbed the mic arm and swung it into Gavin's face. All right, I won't tell the story. Can you imagine it was his cover. <laughs> you were <laughs> the pause, the timing of the pause with you looking at it. It was, it was great. You were, uh, you were a jet setter flying uh, across the uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, so the first flight, I get on the plane, I'm in the window, so, no, I'm in the aisle, and there's a woman in the window. She makes me get up after we've sat down to, like, fiddle with her bags. I'm like, all right. Give it a know, fiddle. Could have done that earlier, but whatever. Uh-huh. Then, this is still before we've, everyone's boarded, she gets up again and moves to a different seat as people are still boarding. Oh. So I was like, is, that, is this not your seat then? I, was just, I didn't say it, I was just like... Weird. Also, people are still bored. Yeah. So how does she know that seat's then, empty? Then, the people whose seat it is come along and they're like, you're in my seat. And she's like, oh, well, it didn't look very busy. And uh, so I just took this seat. And they were like, well, that's our seat. And, it, and the flight was full, by the way. Every single seat on the flight was taken. Which is very common these days. Yeah. Most flights are full. So she made me get up again. So I've got up four times for this woman. Like once for her getting in the seat, then getting out, then getting out, then getting in again. Do Annoying. you prefer being on the aisle or in the middle or the window? Middle. It depends. Window for an overnight flight. Aisle for a not. Right, because you put your I, head on the wall and sleep? Yeah. That's Second okay. flight, right? Second flight. It's a flight to Germany. I get in. I'm in the aisle on the side. International flight. There's like a side bit. You were not sitting with the rest of the achievement hunters. Why? Because you book separately? No, I just don't like flying with people. Good call. Please tell me it was the same woman next to you. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn it. I get on. The German version. The, uh, the window seat's empty. So I know I'm going to have to get up at some point. The biggest, fattest German dude makes me get up. He sits there, pulls the armrest up. Oh, no. Yeah, because fit. he needs to I, fit. Yeah, when I sit down, he's spilling like almost halfway into my seat and puts his leg in my footwell. And I'm no like way. This, and I'm like, I can't sit on a nine hour flight next to this. Yeah. Then I was going like, to text Jeff something to like look out for him. He <laughs> saw me using my phone. He was like, let me call my wife on that. What? And I was what? like. Are you crazy? Let me call my yeah, wife he's like, on that. I need to call my wife. You let me call my wife? I like he says on that. Like he's yeah. never seen he's a like, cell phone. Oh, phone? I'm familiar with those. I'm, I need to call my wife. And I was like, uh, I mean, it's not, it's, it's an English Unless phone. you're calling her to pick yeah. you up from this flight and right like, now. <laughs> he's like, don't worry, it's not long distance. I was like, what does that mean? I like, should know who, who you, you don't know where my phone's registered to? Yeah. I'm English on a, an American flight to Germany. You don't know where I'm from. Also, well, maybe like, she was in his stomach. So <laughs> it's not that far away. He ate her just before the flight. He needs to call an ambulance. That was the, that was. The Did you let point. him use that's, your phone? It's the worst. No, no, I didn't. And I lied to him and I said it it wouldn't work. And then I moved seats because the flight wasn't that full. Yeah. Oh, I moved to I a like middle it. seat in in five. Like that was more preferable than being on the aisle wow. on an international flight. I uh, I actually fucked up on a flight. I felt really self conscious and embarrassed about it. Yeah. Because normally I pride myself on being like a very con- conscientious flyer. I'm 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 very aware of other people. I'm so laid back. I feel like I should be I'm laid doing. back. I'm just gonna lay back on the couch too. So I got, I, on plane, I got on a plane. I got on a small plane. One that had one seat on one side and two on the other. Crazy two seats. And my seat <laughs> was C. So I assumed it was the window. Mm-hmm. I sat in the window and the dude comes up. He's like, "Oh, I think you're in my seat." Uh huh. Like, no, this is C. He goes, no, you would think that, but that's actually D. You're in the aisle. I was like, oh, what? you messed up. Yeah, I was like, I'm. Gus really messed sorry. up on a flight. Yeah, I was like, I, I felt of. terrible. Like, that's like wrecking like, your perfect attendance record. Yeah, I was like, what? Oh, yeah, you're right. <sighs> See, I will always take the <laughs> aisle seat if I could choose. Really? Me, me too. Because I hate, especially on long flights, like you would think I'd want the window seat to sleep. I would think but that. But I would hate to wake anybody up. That's why. Having to get out. Do you have to pee a lot? I, can I just like getting up and walking around. Actually, Whether or not I'm actually going to the bathroom or not, it's just... I get antsy and you claustrophobic. Want see, you want to see a picture of the guy who was... Who you was took a picture of him? Oh, oh, I, I took this. a picture I after I moved. This. Oh, what? 
<laughs> and then, actually, in the middle of the flight, he got up and started walking around and, like, put his hand all over Jack's screen. We, we actually Jack have a photo here. I found it <laughs> uh, on the internet <laughs> of uh, Gavin on his fly. <laughs> <laughs> Someone tweeted this to us. I'll give him credit in just a second. There's a comedian who had a whole bit about the etiquette of here, he the three oh, seats oh, on a oh, plane. That was uh, Hold That Ghost on Twitter uh, tweeted us that photo or that image. Look at that, I guess. Let me see that. That dude is real. That dude is chillaxing. He was just spewing across both. How many wow. pounds do you think he was? I don't know. Or uh, kilograms. That's rough. Oh, it's a big dude. He's wow. like laid out. Yeah. Like his head up against the window and just like he's already he's in Gavin's seat. You can clearly yeah. see he's in Gavin's seat. Well, he's lying down. So yeah. Okay. He's third flight. Himself. You know, sometimes where you when uh, where did you fly? That you fly well, three different flights. It was one of the flights was back from England and then it was Germany and then back from Germany. Gotcha. Okay. Third flight. Coming back from Germany to the US. You know, sometimes when you're on an international flight, you're watching the screen and someone like just puts their hand on your screen. If they're like walking past you no, in the aisle? No, just like in the, in the seat in front, they like stretch out. I hate that. Like I fucking hate that. Like sometimes just put it in front of the screen. I've never had that, but I can imagine it. Right. I got a picture in my head. This guy put both hands behind his head and interlinked his fingers over my screen. Wow. I literally. Couldn't see a single piece of the screen. What did I was you like, do? I just waited. I didn't know what to do. I you didn't, didn't, I didn't want to like be like poke him in the hand and be like, get your hand off my screen. Because he's watching his screen. He knows that there's a, there's a screen there. He could also feel yeah. it, right? With so I was hands? like, I let it go for like a minute. I paused it. I was just like, I just, I want to shoot myself in the face. About an hour later, he did it again and started like tapping on it like bongos. And he was like rewinding, changing the movie, like flicked it to the radio. I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to die. Wow. Why do I keep getting sat next to pricks? You're on a plane. Don't it's be a prick. because you're so far the other way that you notice whenever someone's yeah. a prick. The etiquette what? for that, though, is that when that happens, is you just reach out, grab the seat top in front of you, and just shake it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say reach out and just grab their hands. I, uh, I, just was, on, I was on a flight once, you know, where the seat in front of me was really close, and someone did the same thing. There was no, like, screen in the seat back, but he did the same thing where he reached back and put his hands there. And he did that, and his knuckles were all just oh. cut and gnarly. Hey. And just like he, <laughs> him closing his hands, like reopened the cuts. And he was like an old <laughs> dude, like an old man with cut up Last knuckles. Time someone and told it just him like his hands. right in front of my face. It's like all that I can see him like. Disgusting. Wow, thanks, dude. I'm really glad I'm on this flight right behind There's you. There's a whole blog dedicated to like poor etiquette on planes. I, I think the one that always threw me off was the person who's sitting in the window seat, and someone has stuck their bare foot up. Yep. I see that all the time. Really? Pass the, the, pass the seat and like put it like next to their armrest. Sometimes like I'll that. put it like just on the back of a chair. No. Like, you know where the back of the armrest is here? Put like, your foot down. Yeah. But not barefoot. <laughs> I'll just go like this because I'm so tall that usually my feet don't fit like against the chair like this, especially if someone's leaning back. So I have to put them up somewhere. People also don't get that like the under your seat, that's for the person, that's for you. Like under your own seat, that's not for you. Right. That's not for you. But sometimes you get like bare toes like on the railing stuck out. It's like I hate when <laughs> sometimes I'll like bring my feet back and then like accidentally kick the person's feet yeah. that are like sticking out. Like they put their makes their toes kick out. I'm, like, it harder. Oh, oh, like, I'm like, oh, oops, sorry. You know, that was an accident. I wasn't like trying to do a passive aggressive thing. Did you see that conversation, Meg? Uh, and she's not a mic, so I'll repeat what she says here. But there was a guy on Twitter who in the middle of it said, Yeah. I don't uh, I don't ever fly Delta anymore because I broke my leg on a flight and the pilots were really rude to me about it. Like they didn't care. And I was like, okay, wait a second, buddy. I I, like, I, go, I got a reply to this. How do you break your leg on an airplane? And he said he was in the bathroom. They hit turbulence. The plane dropped 100 feet and he snapped his leg. What? In the bathroom, he snapped his I leg. I reckon bollocks. Well, how else? How else do you break your leg? 100 feet. Or some, whatever. Oh, that, I mean, planes drop. I think he said. I actually think he said like twenty or thirty feet. It dropped. Yeah. And it, I mean, whatever it was, it snapped his leg. Was he still able it. to wipe? What's that? <laughs> what did he do? What was the wiping situation <laughs> like? I mean, like you break your leg on the toilet, you can still. Also, if you dropped a hundred feet, right? If you dropped hundred feet, you'd smash your head on the ceiling. I would think that's. Is, I, I, I you can't drop up, without. Guys. You assumed he was sitting down? How do you break his leg sitting down? It's funnier to say the wiping joke. Oh. Okay, <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a fucking joke, dude. Hey, Gus, I want to apologize to you for when earlier when I asked to you to clarify what was obviously a joke. So, sorry about that, Gus. So, he broke his leg in the bathroom during turbulence. That's what he said. And didn't get an apology from the pilots? Is what his issue was? Listen, I, like I could read between the lines on this. I'm sure the pilots are like, you... Of course they're mad because somebody on the plane broke their fucking leg. How often does that happen? Yeah. <laughs> Never did somebody break their leg on a plane. And the reason he probably broke his leg, reading between the lines here, is there was probably a sign going, return to your seat, and he didn't do it. Well, if he was taking a hefty dump. 
There's, no, there's no way you can yeah, you're, wipe him deeply back in, in the there. seat. You have, you have to get help, right? You got to hit the button. Help. You have to like the the, the flight attendant. Oh, call button. You're saying after you broke his leg, you get yeah. Help. He's like, can we help you, sir? Like, uh, oh, I need God. someone to come in and wipe me, uh, <laughs> carry me out. <laughs> there was a dude on a flight I was on recently, coming back from L.A., who got up as the plane was landing, like it was about to touch the ground. This guy tried to get up to go to the bathroom, and the flight attendant's like, "Sit the fuck down! What the fuck are you doing? Like We're about to final wait. approach." Yeah. Kind of wow. We're probably like 200 feet away. Hold it, buddy. Yeah. I had a I had a thing that's never happened to me before. Where I was, I'm usually the first one on a plane because it's platinum. You just get on with all the first class people. Yeah, you go. Oh, here we go. Here there watch. it is. Douchebag. Here's yeah, the douchebag talk. Okay, yeah, I'm with you. Oh, I'm sorry, guy. Yeah, I I made fun of you, but I'm I'm and then, with you. Because then, because so then you talking. get all like you get all the bin space. You just bung your bag up. So I <laughs> so I sat in my seat and I was like, man, I'm tired. I've been flying a lot. I'm just gonna shut my eyes for a bit. And then you kind of like you're dozing. Yeah. I'm like doing this and like the plane's filling up. And I was like. And then it felt like a lot of time had passed, and I was like, when are we to... Oh, we're, we're at 40,000 feet. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even feel the takeoff. That's the best. That has I, never happened to me I before. I love doing that. It's like when you get down... Normally, I'll wait till the plane's done boarding. Uh, then they close the cabin door. I take my glasses off and put them there when they start like the pre-flight safety stuff. And I close my eyes, and I try to see how, like, how far I get into the flight before I wake up. I love sleeping through takeoff. It's just like, how do how did I sleep through accelerating to like 500 well, miles an hour? It's like you get catapulted into the future, literally. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're like, boom, you're like throwing part way across the country. And then you wake up, you're like, oh, cool, we're, we're like halfway yeah. there. And because I was like dozing in and out, I was like, hey, it was empty seats. And then I was like, there's Doctor Who sat right next to me. I was sat next to Christopher Eccleston, who was like... The reboot doctor. When did you start Who. talking to him with, like, within the flight? I never know what a good time. <laughs> that would be to weird to wake up. Yeah, I was like, say, oh, I can't believe I said that. You turn over and there's Doctor Who. Yeah. Right <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. I, I, st I was too scared to talk to him because he was. Oh, really? Do you think? Yeah. Do you think no, I, I did, though, because I, uh, I was filling out my customs form and he had to do the same thing. He's on the same visa as me and uh, his pen broke. So I was like, Visa buddies? And it was like, <laughs> you handed him a, like, a thermometer. You, <laughs> a sonic think pen. Both of his hearts were beating at 120 <laughs> beats per minute. Was he like double excited? Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, nice chat to him. He's a really nice bloke. Really, we're just talking about our visas and how it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, there is. Was that a, he a, looks, a baggage? He looks what? He, he, I mean, it's been a while since he was on Doctor Who. So it was, he, it's been I, a decade. I was, a, I was a little startled how much older he looks because I've just seen him like, I haven't seen any of his work since Doctor Have Who. Have you seen Thor 2? Yeah. He was a bad guy. Excuse me. Have I seen, yeah, I've seen Thor too. What? There's a bad guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think just fire robots. Dark, no, that's Thor one. Thor two is Dark World, right? Is that what it's called? Isn't he the bad guy in Thor two? That's Loki. That's his brother. The lo the, the brother's the bad guy. No, wasn't there like him as Are a bad guy? Are you thinking of the Avengers? No, it's Thor. I'm pretty sure we're talking Avengers. about. Ant -Man. I know. Oh, well, by the way, did we were going, it was, it was got Paul Rudd? He was also in Heroes as the Invisible Bloke. I must have you missed never that. saw him though. <laughs> 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 he was just a voice part. <laughs> See, that's how I know that I, I, I know that I won't spend, I spend other people's money. I feel like I treat it like my own. Like, I, I really do feel like I do that. Because there was a time we went to Australia, and Joel negotiated with the uh, convention, because Joel's a bad flyer. He negotiated to fly uh, business class, not first class, but business class to Australia. Right. But that is like, that's like a $12,000 ticket, you right? You basically add a zero to the end of your... Your ticket yeah, cost. Yeah, it's like, I mean, it is literally, like a, and I found out it was a twelve or $15,000 ticket, and they said to me, they go, uh, the, the guy that organizes stuff for us down there, he goes, well, they're doing it for Joel, so they're all, they'll all do it for you as well. I go, I can't, I can't justify <laughs> spending, because yeah. the ticket's already like 1800 bucks. I go, I can't justify spending $13,000 of anyone's money for like 10 hours of my comfort. Mm -hmm. I, feel like I'm ma I feel like I'm making... Thirteen thousand dollars for somebody with ten hours of work, and I'm sleeping for most of it. Yeah, and they and they greet you at the airport with a brand new car that you get to keep. Yeah. Yeah. I know, right? I mean, it's like I just couldn't ju ever justify spending that amount of money for a trip like that. Wow. Yeah, you. And could, the, the you best part about it, yeah. I'm in coach, like on the aisle. I slept like ten out of eleven hours on like that a flight. Pig. The way that I do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <Nope>. a pig. <laughs> I had no accidents in my pants or anything like that. But I slept like 10 of the hours. I get out the flight and I, you know, Joel's gets off first, of course. And I meet him there. He's like this. I go, what's wrong? He goes, I didn't sleep a wink. I was like, what are you? Uh, how did you not sleep? You're like, you're literally sitting in a bed. Yeah, you know, and a you, pod. And you slept bolt up right on a metal chair. Yeah. I was like, I was like leaned like this. Oh, he got to sit in like one of those pods that has yeah. its own like television. Well, wow, usually business class on an international flight always has a, a flat reclining bed. 
Yeah. I've ah. never done it. I'm so excited to do it. Yeah, when I flew, when I, Me too. I, I, got I would upgrade. like to do it one day too. I used uh, upgrade credits. I got to fly business on uh, the 787 between uh, LA and Melbourne. That's awesome. Mm. It was life flat. The one bad thing, you know me, I don't like talking to people. I don't like, like, I just want to sit down. I want to eat. I want to sleep. The flight attendant, I guess since it's like in business class, was like super chummy and like trying to make jokes and talk all the time. It's like, hey, my name's oh, Steve. And we're we're going to be together for there the next 13 hours. Uh, like, snobs in that. In that like, oh, my God. Like, Steve, I, I just want to sleep. I just want you to bring me my ice cream sundae and then leave. <laughs> 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 but you can also tell him that, too. I can also say this, is that Gavin's absolutely right. There are some absolute... You think if someone's sitting in a first-class seat on an uh, airline in the modern world, that that is going to be a happy person. That that person is like, my life is good. I, I'm, I'm enjoying the miracle of flight. Everything's fantastic. Not only that, I have a special seat yeah. in this plane, and they, somebody brings me food, and I'm considered and to I be... I get warm nuts. A better, yeah, it's a better seat and a better experience than even this already amazing experience. Nope. Those people are unhappy as fuck. Yeah, you basically sat with 15 miserable pricks. Typically. Yeah, and that is like, if you go in like... Like the main cabin, and you, and you're traveling with pe other people, and somehow you got split up. You're like, would you mind swipping, switching with me? People are always like, absolutely. I'm talking 95 percent of the time in first class. I don't even ask anymore. 95 percent of the time, the people say absolutely not. I've seen it before. No, where, or they say uh, nothing. I, yes. I've seen it where a husband and wife got separated yes. in first class. There was a guy in the aisle seat. The husband comes over. He's like, hey, uh, I was wondering if I could sit by my wife. I, I see you're in the aisle seat. I'm in that aisle seat right there. Can we just swap? The guy goes, no. This is my seat. Yeah. yeah no. I've, seen, I've seen it happen. And the, and the guy was like, like, you're still in first class. Yeah, like no, you're, no. You're, you're, literally like, trading. you're like five feet to the left. Even I'm, two feet yeah, to the left. From one aisle seat to another aisle seat. Oh my God. No. I, Nothing I about heard, your experience changes. I heard one guy look a woman in the eye and was like, I, I bought 3A. Yeah. I'm sitting in 3A. And she was just like. I guess some people are just, when you you have that kind of opportunity, you're very particular about what you want. Uh, just a bunch of, it actually sometimes makes the experience worse. Like. First class on a, on a domestic flight isn't very good. Like, it's, you know, way way more room, comfier chair, and you get, like, silverware that's actually metal. Your little knife. And some meal. Yeah. But it, it's not ever worth paying for. Like, I would never pay that price no. for that. You get a free upgrade. And you're just yeah. surrounded by a bunch of miserable bastards. So sometimes it's like, oh, I wish I was back in coach. I probably have a whole road to myself at this yeah. point. Yeah. I still, I, I pissed off. Uh, on a, on a, I just got back from doing The Amazing Race. So I was gone for, like, a full month. Um, because regardless of how long you're participating in it, they keep everyone away the same amount of time, so you can't tell like what place people finished in and things like that. But uh, I was dealing with like I, I am very careful around TSA people, but that, there's a big grind with associated with the race, so I got kind of worn down. I pissed off a I'm not sure if I can say how, but I pissed off like a security person, and it's the second security person I've ever pissed off. Do you remember the first time? The first time you pissed like off they legitimately got upset person. with me. I don't remember that. It no. was in New Zealand. And they were coming around with a service dog. And the service dog had a little patch on it that was like like produce and stuff like that. It was food, clearly a food logo. And I asked the lady, I go, what kind of service dog is this? I go, what, what's the patch for? And she goes, oh, this is uh, New Zealand. Uh, this is a dog. It doesn't sniff for drugs. It was going sniffing at everyone's luggage. It sniffs for food. It finds food, especially trained dog. And I go, isn't a dog that finds food just a dog? <laughs> and she got really upset with me. It's like, I always wondered, what's the training for that dog that it's like you have to, you're like, what do you, how do you reward it when it finds food? You, you give it the food? It's just like my whole, all my dogs can find my food my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I gotta keep him from getting my food. Maybe you have to give him like a, a, the same version of food. Like if he finds a pizza, like fuck, gotta give the dog a pizza now. <laughs> <laughs> like the dog finds broccoli. Like all right, here you go. <laughs> what is the best job in the dog world? Money. And, like other dogs is that? That's got to be top of the list for a lot of dogs. It's like, what do you do? It's Finding like, oh, food. I just find food at the airport. It's like you can pay for that. <laughs> find food in my house all the time for free. But they don't get to eat the food. You do you know that. No, <laughs> maybe. I mean, I'm sure that it, it would be the worst job in that case. Well, because right, every like other canaries. dog that finds food, they eat it. You eat it. It falls off yeah. the table or whatever, and that's what a dog is for. A dog is basically the vacuum cleaner of the house for like, for lazy people. Or the or, dad is as well. The, the, that's just the food. Hopefully, that hasn't fallen to the floor right. yet. Right. Although I have eaten that food too. That oh, is God. the pecking order in a house. Is yeah. that still the, on the kids table. get it? Dad gets it. The trash. And then if it falls on the floor, the dogs That's get it. right. That's basically the way it works. It's like a Roomba, but I, <laughs> you don't have to recharge it. I remember when we went to uh, New Zealand that time, and I guess it wasn't the same uh, incident with the dog because there was a there was those the 
the dogs, the sniffing dogs, and it's Matt it looked like they were. By the way. Hey, Matt hey, how are, you, how are you guys doing? I thought they were. I thought it was. It looked like it was drug sniffing dog, and they were right. around those. Do you remember there was like a group of like Rastafarian looking, <laughs> but they were like, but they were like white kids, but they had like dreadlocks, uh-huh. and they just looked like the prototypical. We've been smoking pot on the beach all day and the dogs just like didn't do anything but like the dog played it cool just came and like sidled up to them or just like hanging out like we know <laughs> it doesn't even matter we don't smell anything we know it's cool one, we're one, cool one time i saw the same thing in new zealand those damn dogs this guy you know they, they do it when you're getting your luggage off of the off of the belt uh this guy gets his bag off dogs walking by dog smells his lu- luggage and sits down so you know, the agent's like, sir, we need to go through your bag. The dog has sat down and indicated he smells something in your luggage. The guy's like, all right, whatever. Opens up the bag. The agent like pulls everything out, look through it. There's nothing in it. He's like, all right, sorry, sir. I guess uh, the dog uh, indicated falsely. It walks away. The guy's like, great. So the guy starts putting all his stuff back uh, into the bag, zips it up. Right as he zips it up, a different dog comes by, smells it, and sits down. The agent's like, sir, we need to go through your bag. Oh. The guy's like, but I remember that guy, guy just went through it. And like, the dog sat down. We need to go through your bag again, sir. Good lord. Wow. So, I, I like how subtle it is. Like, they don't bark. They just sit. Can you teach a dog to wink? That'd be pretty <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it just like, just like shoots a pot. Yeah. Know, like, yeah. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> I got this guy over here. Um, did you see there was that uh, aborted takeoff of the A350 this No. Week? An aborted takeoff. That's. So I guess it was the first uh, A350 the- taken off from the US. It was like a press event where they had. Like oh, media man. influencers on the plane. They only had 36 <laughs> people on the plane. Media influencers. <laughs> and they were all in business in first class. It's A350 taking off from uh, New York, flying to Doha, Qatar. It was on Qatar Airlines. And uh, the plane's taking off down the runway. And there's, there's film. I mean, there's video of it because the guys inside were all uh, media people. And uh, so this, the, there's this video of this guy filming it. He's like looking at the camera. There's a camera mount in the tail, like looking at the plane. He's like looking out the window, look at the camera. Then all of a sudden, everybody in the frame just like, just like leans forward, and uh, I guess they say that the plane detected the runway was too short for takeoff, so it automatically applied the brakes. The plane wow. detected that well, wow. <laughs> and then, so they they had to go back to the gate. People wanted to be left let off the plane. They would not let anybody off the plane. Whoa. They held them there for two hours. Oh, then man. decided they would try to take off on a different runway. <laughs> this is a press event? It's a press event. That worked out and well. So as the plane's so breaking and they're stopping, the guy's like looking around with his camera. One of the flight attendants is yelling, turn your camera off, sir. Turn your camera off. Like, I kind of want that feature out. I want the pilot to be able to know whether the, the runway is too short. Right. I had uh, an annoying bastard sat next to me on my flight yesterday. What happened? Why was he an annoying bastard? He was, uh, so I'm in the middle of three. On the plane, it's like three, three, and three. And I was on the aisle middle. And no one sat in the middle seat. So there was m- me, no one, and this guy. Okay. And I was like listening to the, listening to my headphones. They're like noise canceling, so I can't hear anything. I don't know if he was yelling at me. But eventually he goes, he like starts thumping on my arm. I was like, oh, God, what? And he was like, is anyone sat here? And I was like, I, I don't know. And he was like, hopefully not. And I was like, all right, yeah. <laughs> went back to it. Then, 10 minutes later, we'd already taken off at this point. He's like thumping on my arm again. I was like, oh my God, this guy. What's up? And he's like, low battery on your headphones. His beat is flashing. And I was like, thanks. I- I'll know when the headphones turn off. Thanks. Oh my God. And then. Your nightmare. Both he, of uh, your nightmares. He, yeah. He loudly starts like blowing his nose into some tissues. I was like. You can hear it through loud. the noise. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> Then a flight attendant comes by, starts clearing away drink cups. Uh-huh. I uh, pick up my cup to give to the flight attendant. He leans over me, stuffs his gammy tissue into my cup. Oh, like, why? While, I was like, while it's in your hand? Yeah, uh-huh. I was like, gross! Do it on your side Did with your flight it? attendant. No, he just shoved it in. I was like, this this guy just doesn't have any... Social no, boundaries. He's like, horrible. where did you grow up? He's Nobody horrible. does that. What That's flight from horrible. where to where was this? It was from England to Austin. Was he English or American? I think he was German. <laughs> okay. You, have, you have bad luck with Germans. He was, he was speaking you. English with a German accent. Okay. So I was flying back from Ontario, California, and I was connecting through Phoenix because I had to fly American. There's no direct, there's no direct between Ontario and no, Austin. Why don't you go to LX? Because uh, it was an hour away, and I had to like, I, it worked out I was leaving like 6.20 in the morning. I just wanted to get back and see the kids. And I wrapped at like 3 and barely made it to my Fuck. 6.20 flight. To get to my 6.20 flight, Sit there for an hour on the tarmac, waiting. Because this was the dumbest reason ever. There was a discrepancy between 
the maintenance of the plane and what was in the logbook. Mm. Everything in the plane was fine, but there was a discrepancy in the logbook. So they had to get it corrected and it took like 40 minutes. Very serious. But I only had like an hour connection, okay? So I'm eating into that with this 40 minute delay. So we uh, on the, the plane. sucks for connections too. It does suck because it's an enormous airport. It's like long hauls and you got you to run up and then run over then run down. Yeah. And there's no tram or yeah. that as far as I know. It's Terrible. like you can literally like run like a mile and a half it feels like to make mm -hmm. a connection. Um, so we made up some time in the air and I was landing at the Phoenix airport 20 minutes before my next flight took off. So it's already boarding by the time I'm landing. <laughs> And I probably have like five or ten minutes to make it to run to that plane. You and must get have on been it. fidgety as that plane. You have to get off the plane, deal with that whole. I, I had like one foot like in the aisle, like this, like this, and uh, jumped up, grabbed all my stuff, got off the plane. Best thing ever. My plane landed at gate B11. My plane that I was going to was at B12. That I walked never out happens. the door. It was already boarding. I walked right back in the door. My total nice. time in the Phoenix airport was about 34 seconds. It was amazing. How it bad never ass, happened. How badass must that have looked to people stood in the airport? A guy comes off one plane, turns around, goes on a different one. That's exactly That's how like it works. Too. Fans like Bert, Bertie, Bertie. He just walks Peace. into another room. <laughs> and I even like came like da -da 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 out of the gate. I ran up to the gate agent. I go, uh, "Have you called Platinum yet? Because that's my that's my mm -hmm. board on that group." And she goes, "No, but I can take it now." She goes, "I'm just about to start boarding." So I beep and then walked right up. <laughs> wow. So I was like, Too literally, early. yeah. I had that almost one other time where Gavin was waiting at a gate for me, and like. I walked up. So that sounds romantic. I walked up to Gavin to say hi, and right as I was walking up to him, they called my group, so I just kept walking past Gavin and just got right <laughs> on the plane. He said that was perfect timing. But this was all my years of traveling. That's great. That's never happened. 34 seconds is the perfect amount of time to I spend in the Phoenix like, Airport. Like, I almost pulled like a U-turn, Gus, and mm -hmm. I just went in a different door. Like it was Grandpa really awesome. Simpson. I saw this video a few weeks ago of a Ryanair flight where this guy missed his flight. You can see I've got it up over here. There's a video of it. He got to the jet bridge. His plane was gone. Well, how did he get to the jet bridge? He stormed his way on. He fucking chucks his luggage and jumps down and chases after the plane on the runway. That's a good job. That was like an eight-foot jump. Is he trying to steal He's trying a... to get him the luggage car. He's trying to get the guy to give him a ride. The guy says go and starts driving off. So he fucking legs it for the goddamn plane. They arrest this guy? Uh, they let him get on the plane, and then they arrested him when they landed. Really? Oh, I don't know how he plane? gets on the plane at this point. Nor do I. Well, I mean, those Ryanair planes I, aren't the fastest. That guy is running from someone who's but trying to height. kill him. Right. The height. He, like, I guess he jumped down that This leg. is lunacy. He's running, he's running from someone who's trying to kill him. That's the only explanation for why you're joining Dude, he is trying to get out of the fuck country. He's getting stopped by employees who are pointing the direction. Oh, your plane went that way. <laughs> That's those are helpful plane. airline employees. That's how you get, like, sucked into one of those fucking turbine things on the jet. Lost style? Have you ever flown Ryanair? Awful. Dog. Yeah? Dog shit. Mm. I had someone, uh, I flew this week as well, back from LA, because um, that was the Crutch Ride premiere, which premiered this weekend. And there was awesome a guy show. in front of me who reclined his seat back. The second we were able to, he reclined his seat back all the way. And he was one of those people that, like, whenever he moves, he pushes all the way back on the seat. Yeah. yeah. And so my knees were, I had to sit like this the whole flight. Always open. Why didn't you? <laughs> how far back do those seats recline? Because even if you recline your seat, it's not going to move your legs back. Exactly. So th this is just like a poorly designed Why were your plane. knees it was up really... in his back? I'm a tall person. But like the, the, my knees don't go higher than the armrest and yes. anything below the armrest doesn't move. It, it was touching my legs. Wait, your knees don't go above the armrest? No. The armrest is like here. At yeah, the top down... of the armrest. It, it, the, it, it moves down at the bottom of the armrest. You mean it goes to that? Yeah. The the top of the seat. Yeah. Like the, the, the bottom of the, the top. I mean, I've, only had, I've right. had like the chair hit me in the face, but that's because I'm leaning forward at the time. Now, I've had my knees smashed in before by yeah. recline chairs. And I don't get mad at them. That is their right as an airline passenger to recline that seat. There you are do people it. who feel like you shouldn't do that. Have and you I'm, seen the product? I don't, I don't do it. We've talked about but this before. If you want to do it, I understand you do you. reclining your seat. Maybe just like one of those little one clicks just to get the little relax in your a, back. It's not a click. The one little like hinge. Nah, no. go all out. Go all out. It's, 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 there's I, no I hinge. It's just like you paid for that seat. Use every degree. Yes, of absolutely. Fucking so you break sat there seat, not recline reclining because you felt it was wrong to the person behind you. Yeah, do well, it. I just did. I just did the Martyr. one little one little click. It's not click. There are no clicks. But Have also, it sucked product? because there was a TV screen on the back of the chair that I was watching a movie on, and so when he reclined, it was like this close to me. That's yeah. awesome. Then like it's like the screen's even bigger. Yeah, you can pull it down too. But not this one. What? This one didn't move. You, so you were like swivel? this? I, oh. No, I was just like, I was watching the movie like this. <laughs> that sucks. Your legs are open and you're 
Chin is in your chest. <laughs> awesome. Look. There's a thing you can buy. You the rest of the podcast it's, like it's that. It's two clips that you put on. I think you put them on your tray. Yeah. But it like totally stops the chair in front from reclining. Yeah. And everyone's like, "Yeah, it's great." I'd be if someone used that on my chair, I'd be livid. I'd, I'd be, be like, pretty mad too. I'd be trying to like break it. Yeah. yeah. You know, is that allowed? Are you allowed to do that? Uh, I think. No. Yeah, you can. You, if you complain about it, then they have to remove it. Like, someone will try to put it on there, but Actually, they, they cannot do that. I, I would bet that you could theoretically get somebody kicked off a plane for modifying the aircraft. Like, basically, whatever the flight crew wants to establish as a rule, they can totally do it. Yeah. Like, if a flight crew says, I, we kicked this guy off the plane because we didn't like the color shirt he was wearing, you got to get off the plane. <laughs> uh, speaking of airlines doing what they want, when I was flying back from New York this on Sunday, uh, I was waiting to board the plane. And, you know, normally they go through the announcements, we're going to begin boarding, you know, all the typical stuff. Then uh, the gate crew started saying, uh, if you have a Samsung Galaxy Note 7, please oh, yeah. power it off. Do, you know, do not power it on during the flight. Do not plug it into the in-flight power and do not put it in any of your checked luggage, which, of course, they were a little late for that one. But yeah. I was like, damn, they specifically called a phone out and said, well, do not use this phone on a plane. <laughs> keep catching on fire. Yeah, I mean, they're exploding at a pretty decent rate at this point. I that is a done brand a whole, in crisis, dude. They've done a whole recall of like every single one, haven't they? Uh, yeah. I flew out uh, Saturday morning and my gate was like gate 22. And security checkpoint one, the new one, is by gate Off one. But I was like, it's new. I've never seen it. So I went out of my way to go to it. And then I get through it. And I'm like, oh, my God, my flight's on the other side of the airport. I'm just going to chill here because it's like four in the morning. And then, like, I wasn't paying attention. I dozed off a little bit and I oh missed God. my flight. Oh, oh my God. I was like too lazy to go. It you was worth it. It's a very nice checkpoint. <laughs> that is so content. stupid, Brandon. I, you know how excited I get with stuff like this. You got so excited you fell asleep? Well, no, I'm so excited. <laughs> I went to the other side of the airport, and then I got in, and I was, like, fucking tired. I was like, look, I got an hour and a half. I'm just going to chill here, and then I'll walk that is to my terrible. gate. Yeah, it was bad. You spent far too long at the airport that day. That sounds terrible. No, it's crazy. There was another flight to Houston 30 minutes later, and then there was another flight to Monterey, Mexico 30 minutes after that. Oh, it was. Fine. I have never missed a flight in my life. I've only I, missed, just, like, connecting flights where my inbound flight is delayed. And, I've done that. Yeah. But, but that's as far as control. origin... You are correct. Yeah. Because you're not a psychopath. Yeah. No, I was so excited. I never got to go. <laughs> you were in the airport. I know, but it was always so early. When we were going down to Sydney for RTX Sydney, I had uh, a first time flyer on the flight with me. So I, had, I flew Austin to Houston, then Houston to Sydney. I had a first time flyer on the Austin to Houston leg. She was a woman who looked like maybe she was a little older than I am. And she was sitting across the aisle and up one row. And uh, she walked in, and immediately I was like, oh, there's this woman's trouble. She walked in, and uh, she sat down and turned to the guy next to her and said, very loudly, I could hear it, I've never been on a plane before. I'm sorry, I'm going to vomit all over you. Oh, God. And the guy said, don't worry, it's fine, it's fine. She said, I, she kept saying, I told him to buy me a Megabus ticket. I'm just going to Katy. If you're from Austin, taking a plane to Intercontinental to get to Katy is about the dumbest way to get to Katy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like Katie's like a 90 minute drive away. Yeah, and I think Katie to Intercontinental is like an hour drive So there's no I mean, time being it's saved a good there. if you want to experience a flight for the first time to get it over with It makes sense to do like a really short one. Well, but it doesn't sound like she wanted it to be seemed like an eternity because She then immediately started ordering drinks uh. And got it, it's a 30 minute flight to Houston. She got drunk <laughs> uh, Like immediately and then she kept saying like the guy next to her at one point, we were in the bulkhead. He, he, they were in the bulkhead. He stretched his legs out in front of him. And she said, she started screaming, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are we crashing? Are you bracing yourself? Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, lady, just chill. Calm down. <laughs> and the guy's like, nope, I'm just stretching. I've just been sitting a little while, so I want to stretch my legs. And she's like, okay, I'm going to vomit all over you. <laughs> and, and, then, and then eventually we land in Houston, and I'm, I'm skipping over a lot of stuff that she said. She was absolutely insane. But uh, we land in Houston, and uh, her phone rings, so she answers it, and she says, yeah, I, I guess it's whoever paid for her plane ticket, whoever she's going to go see in Houston, in Katy. She answers the phone. She's like, yeah, yeah, we just landed. We're still driving in the plane. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 we're on the floor now. And I hear the guy in the row behind me go, on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> like, what a weird way to describe what you're doing. Uh, and then she's like, oh, no, 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 you don't have to buy me a Jeep. I'm so, I'm, I'm totally happy with my 2006 Mitsubishi. I was like, is she humble bragging? How does she have a car at the destination airport? I don't know. 
I have no idea. This woman is perplexing. Also, I would hate to invite someone down from Austin to Katy, and I've got to buy them a fucking plane ticket to go down there. And then you've got to pick them up at Intercontinental. It's ridiculous. Or, I mean, or, I don't know if she's driving. Who knows? Just pick them up at their house. Right. Did she stand up as soon as you guys landed to get their bag? No, she didn't. Okay. Thankfully. All right. I'm going to give her a pass on this one, then. Yeah, it was. Did you it? give her a pass? It was, it was, it was, in, it was something else. Do you know if the black box down panel, are we releasing that? I don't think so. Shit. Is it, should I tell that story I told about? Yeah. You want to save it for Black Box Down. Oh, speaking of Black Box Down, you're wearing our new shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh. It comes out next week uh, on the 19th. It's the, the autopilot logo. Very Chris, soft. please stop, stop rubbing your nipples. <laughs> well, that's where the autopilot <laughs> yeah, show, is show roughly us located. <laughs> show me where. Move your mic and show us. Oh. There you go. There it is. It's actually a really soft shirt. Like I said, move your mic and he just moved yeah, himself. No, so is that like the official logo of Black Box Down? Or like what? It's is that like a... Autopilot. Oh. So like in the little animated uh, explanations, that's the little oh. autopilot guy. That's very cute. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's just a really soft shirt. I really like that shirt a lot. It's coming out. It'll be in the store next week. Very cool. Okay. So uh, confirming saving for Black Box Down. Saving for Black Box Down. We, yeah. We have, we're going to we're gonna need more content here soon. <clears throat> okay. But you're going to have to react as if you haven't heard it before. Oh, I shouldn't stop. It, it can be a podcast story. <laughs> tell it. Tell it. He wants to it. save it. Gus needs to save stories for all four of his podcasts. <laughs> this is my second podcast today. Yeah. Um, yeah, tell it. Go for okay. it. Okay. Uh, I feel bad now, though. Okay. No, no. I got bullied into it. Tell, Here, just tell, tell it to me story. and Gavin. All right. <laughs> we'll listen. Um, I recently got on... A plane that I wasn't supposed to be on. Oh my god! Like while traveling, <laughs> when I went when I went to that family trip. How does that happen? You got onto the plane. I I got onto the plane, but also and it was the wrong plane. Don't they scan your ticket when you're going through the gate? Like don't. Yeah. Did you spin move around the gate agent? How did you get on? It was so. <laughs> How does that? I was just as confused as all of you. Here. <laughs> not not me. <laughs> Well, oh wait, happened. no, I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> See, what? now you don't have to. Um, so, I, uh, I was going, I had an early flight. Yeah, from Austin? From Austin, yeah. And I think I told this wrong. I had called an Uber. Do you notice the construction on the door of the airport? What? No, keep going. There is, no, don't there is the, I called an Uber <laughs> and true. was rushing around, grabbing my stuff, getting together because I was a little late. And then... Get in the car, uh, Uber, and driving off. And then I realize that's about halfway to the airport that I don't have my phone. That I had left oh it. Oh my God. That I had left it. How did you know your Uber was there? He called it and then. Like, I think. How did I, you know it was ready? I think what I. I think what I did was I had all my bags at the door. Uh huh. And then I had to, like. So I. I, so I think I set down? it down to get my bags. <laughs> Saw the car was there. Well, no, I, the car's here. I knew the car was here. Ding, you know, whatever. <laughs> set the, Ding, set it down. To, <laughs> set it down to grab my bags. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then lock the door. Like, also, I was like taking out my keys. Sure, so, sure. I understand and, how. And, and, and then I on. walked out because I was in a rush. And then I got in the car and then I was like, oh, and then at some point I'm like, where's my phone? Oh my god! So I go. I had to go out. back. I'm getting stressed out. And uh, just out of curiosity, how early do you tend to leave for a flight? Like, do you uh, give yourself enough time, or are I, you I typically give myself enough time? Okay. But I was sweating it. Okay. Because I was like, because at first I was like, surely it's here. I wouldn't <laughs> like. I was like, I didn't believe <laughs> that phone. I didn't get it. That I got into the car without I, my phone. I believed it. <laughs> but I was like, no, it's got to be here. And I was like, um, but yeah, went around, got it. And I was like nervous, but I don't check. I don't check bags if I can, unless I'm going for more than sure. ten days. Oh, uh, wow, ten days. Yeah, nine days. No, ten. I yeah. feel like more than four days, maybe five. I'm taking. I had actually checking. packed. I had actually packed for like two, three weeks. <laughs> because I, I. But if it's more than ten days. <laughs> wait, wait. Well, but you don't have a check bag. <laughs> Okay, well, so I didn't for this one, but no check bags. But normally I don't check. So back. you have All one. Right. Twenty-one days worth of clothes in the check. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> I would be so derailing the story. Carry on and a backpack. I assume. Yeah, a, a backpack and a uh, carry on. Okay, I had easy. 
And he somehow still forgot your phone. <laughs> so I, I, I go back. I get to the, I get to the airport. I, I had TSA pre-check, so I get through. Okay, and I'm good. like, cool. Made it. Into so the just thing. to clarify, do you have your phone with you at the airport at this point? Yeah, because I went back and got it. Okay. And I considered not doing it at all, but then I was like, "There's no way I can go." Like, <laughs> oh, you cannot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I got through, got on the flight, and then uh, set or I sat down, and a, a moment later, uh, a, a guy comes up and he's like, "Hey, uh, I'm." In first class, I was wondering if you would be up for switching uh, seats with me so I can sit with my family. Who are sit- and I was oh like, oh, I'm God. sitting next to like a kid, uh, you know, like who might cry or Damn, something. Damn, he was willing to give you his first class. And he ticket. gave me his first class. He probably got guilted into it by his uh, And wife. you weren't in first class? No. Hmm. And so I was like, yeah, what, absolutely. What if he was like, no, nah, I want to sit next to the kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, you stay. And so I was like, Whoa. and so I went up first class and I was like, l- l- loving it. I was yeah. like, I'm living a big life. And then uh, get off the flight. I have a transfer to another one. I'm walking and I'm like, oh, I, I basically. I, so you made the right connection at least. Yeah, I made my connection. Uh, so what city are you in now? I don't. No, I don't <laughs> pay attention to those things. I just know I'm in. I need to get to. And this is recent. It, it was in North. I was in North Carolina somewhere. So probably okay. Charlottesville. Probably Charlottesville. Char- probably. Charlottesville. That's not a. That's oh, in anyways. Virginia. <laughs> uh, well, Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, so I, I get. I walk off the plane. <laughs> Y'all are de- derailing this more than me. I know. Well, it's Char- just, I, just so fascinating. <laughs> I get off. I'm um, at. Uh, I put my stuff away, and then I realized I left my laptop in my original seat. So, they, so not in first class, and they, back in economy next to the kid. But the, did the guy who took your seat not be like, oh, shit, his laptop is in this pocket? No, because I, 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 I put it in the little pocket thing. There's, like, magazines and stuff. <laughs> you, you buried it in the... Yeah, so I, I could see not seeing that. Yeah, and I just and I went up, and then uh, I napped the whole way because I was, like, early. <laughs> and then I got off the plane. Uh-huh. Like, that's it. Uh so, but they won't let you back on once you've left. Right. So I had to be like, hey, I left my laptop. What seat were you sitting in? And I was like, well, it's confusing. And I was like, I was in. Funny story. <laughs> I mean, just tell him whatever seat you were originally, because that's where you put it. Yeah, I know. I, but I, You don't have to give them the story of how, well, I was in this seat, and then I moved to first class. <laughs> well, I, I just said, well, I was in first class, but I'm not that guy. Why did you bother with that? <laughs> I don't know, You Barb. should have just told the original seat where you the laptop was. you got to tell the story was. as confusing as possible. <laughs> the laptop is in this they, seat. <laughs> they got my, they got, she found it okay. quickly, got it. And I, but I was like, at this point, stressed about my connection flight. Okay. Because it was, I was already, we'd been delayed a bit. So I was like r- rushing, I was running and I ha- like made it to the gate and I like hand- scanned the thing. I'm like, yes. And how did you know what gate you were at? I looked at my ticket thing. Okay. Did or, you have a paper or, one or was it no, on your it was phone? My phone? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And the phone <laughs> so phone told you that. it was gate 20. Whatever. Let's say. And I get in. You get to gate and 20. And I'm like, sweet, made it. I'm all good to go. And as, well, I, well, I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you as that I, I experienced it. I get on the plane and I'm like, <laughs> I got a good seat uh, because it was like a, a you know, side. I didn't want a middle seat. Okay, I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, sweet. And I sat in, put my laptop away, get my headphones out. Don't take your laptop out. Yeah. Uh, and I listen to something. Um, headphones. Everyone's boarding, and at some point, someone's like, like pokes me, and I'm like, "Hey, what's up?" And he's like, "Hey, I think you're in my seat." And I'm like, "No." And I was like, "Here's here's my ticket thing." And like, it says the seat, and he's like, "Huh?" And he shows me his ticket thing, and it's also my seat. <laughs> huh. That's what I said. And then, <laughs> so then we were, uh, the, uh, one of the flight, flight attendants was like, hey, what, you're like, well, look at this. This is confusing. And she was like, huh, I've never seen that before. And uh, she was, starts looking up our, like, what's your, you know, what are your tickets reserved under? And she's doing that. And then is she's Is this like, all still on the plane? Yeah, I'm on, I'm sitting in the plane. And some guys just like stood awkwardly yeah. in the aisle the whole time. And then she's like, oh, honey. You're on the wrong flight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How did, did they switch your gate and you just didn't look at the update? No, I got on at the right gate. Here's what happened. Because I'd ran. Yeah. I had my, I had all my stuff and my laptop and my thing. When I got to my gate and I had gotten scanned in, uh-huh. then I was putting my stuff away and I was looking down. I walked down the stairs. This was not one of those gates where you get in the tubes and you go directly into the plane. 
It was a oh. smaller, like one of those smaller uh, gates where you actually get on the tarmac. Okay. So you just walked to the wrong plane? <laughs> I walked to the wrong plane. They Honestly, they should have like things to stop people from doing that. They usually like have like... You the rope. <laughs> I, that was I, happening to be boarding at the exact same moment. You know too. when you watch a film like Home Alone? <laughs> that, and is like, ho- that is Home Alone. <laughs> and you're like, this would never happen never. now. You can't just walk to any plane and get on. I so think in 2022. If there was no guy in that seat, because some pl- that's some what pl- I, I was like, oh my god, full, you could have flown to I a would have. different place. You, you, had, you were have. listening to something, you wouldn't have heard the flight attendants or the pilot say, "This is flight blah blah Which blah" is exactly or whatever what city. On Home Alone. <laughs> Kevin's <laughs> in New York. Yeah, he's literally listening to music. <laughs> yeah. So I saw. I was. I was like, this is crazy. So I get off the plane, <laughs> and I'm like, and she's like, she's like, we'll try and hold it. And I'm like, oh my thank God. you. I, <laughs> you know, there's a guy now running off one plane and running to another <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> He's like trying to flag the pilots yeah. down. Like, wait, 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 don't go. But he has to hijack his stairs and like throw his shoe at the plane. <laughs> I start running to the plane and then I, I stop and double take because they made me gate check my bag. <laughs> oh. After all so, that. So then, so your luggage is so on then the I, I, I run back and I'm like, my bag is on the plane. <laughs> And then the guy who's like, you know, the, uh, the luggage handler, the luggage guy, he's like, what's, what's your luggage oh tag? God. And I was like, it's in my seat. <laughs> oh, my God. Which seat? It was, wait, well, uh, some guy. <laughs> yeah, was it in the seat in the right plane or the seat in the wrong plane? In the plane? wrong plane. So one man I hadn't gotten on, I, to be clear, I had not gotten on the correct plane at this point. I re- I, okay. <clears throat> so then the guy was like. I was like, it's black. <laughs> He's like, they're all black. <laughs> and then, so then, he he was like holding up a bag, and, and I was like, no, that's not it. And then he holds up another bag, and said, that's not it. This is such and, a personalized experience for you. I and then he holds up. It, it, it was either the third or the fourth one. I was like, that's it. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and then he gives it to me, and then I run on. And then I get I, I get on my plane, oh, gosh, and it's like, oh, you're, you're the guy. And I'm like, yeah. You're the guy. <laughs> They're going to tell stories about you for years <laughs> at those airports. So where did you almost go? I don't know, Gavin. I was so freaked <laughs> out. I was so freaked you were, out. You were almost a person it was, who didn't know which airport you were in going on a flight to a city you didn't I know. Kn- I mean, I knew what airport I was in okay. when I was there. because I said. Oh. I would love if he woke up like in Bermuda. Like he fell asleep <laughs> on the plane, then he opens his eyes and he's like in another country. No, I just like the idea of him thinking like, damn, how long is this flight? Like looks at his watch. I've been on this plane for five hours. Where am I going? <laughs> yeah, we're all looking at it from the perspective of being Chris. Imagine being another person on that plane going, what the fuck is going on? How are they in the same? And watching him like, wait, he has to get off the plane? How did you and do it? And then he comes back. <laughs> and, and then you're looking out and the window look, and he's talking and to the luggage guy. He runs out and then back. He was trying to like, and then out. And now your plane is held up because he has to get his fucking And he's bag. probably holding a laptop under yeah. one arm with and headphones. And then he's going, dangling. that's the one. And then you see him. <laughs> Run over to a different plane. I imagine the pilot leaning out the window. He's like, "Where are you going?" Oh my god! I get on. I really, I wish there's a way we could find out where that plane was going, just it, to know. I wish we could get access to like the security camera footage <laughs> of like god. Chris scrambling around between the planes and getting his luggage. Usually. Oh man, I would love to see that. I, I, need I guess to if see you're in like point. Charlottesville, North Carolina, no, Charlotte. <laughs> I know that was on purpose. I did that one on purpose. <laughs> I, I've been living my life and there's always stuff under construction. I will hope it ends soon. It will never end. Everything will always be under construction forever. Only and Austin though. No, everywhere. No, nope. nothing will ever be finished. Because that's not how is. the world works. No one's ever like, and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, that's not how like it, it, it it works. it's also like airport construction. Every airport's always under construction. There is yeah. a fucking door in the Austin <laughs> airport. <laughs> It's the, you know, the door I'm talking about, the sliding doors. Yeah. They, they boxed them off eight months ago to fix the door. It's still boxed off to this day and no one can answer why <laughs> the fuck. Eight months ago. It, do, how long has that been under control? The, the American, American, American Airlines? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's been, been like three months. It's been a long time. No. It's been a long it's been time. been a bit. Lunatic. Three months. That's why it takes your country four years to fix a fucking bell because you can't keep track of time. That door has been under construction at least eight or nine months. A door. It's a doorway. It's no. a doorway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the opening already just, you know what it is? They don't want you to use the door because of the fucking AC yeah. in the summer. So mm-hmm. they're delaying it until the end of the summer. 
I guarantee it. Mm. Well, to do that, they they always have two sets, and they open one door and then the other on the diagonal. How many times have you ever been to an airport in anywhere else in the U.S. where one of the major entrances is just doesn't exist, like it's boxed it's off? One terminal, all shitty and terrible, it's and like everything. One terminal, of course, there's going to be a broken door. I see construction all the time, all the time at our airport. I don't see it. I go to other airports a lot. I don't run into construction constantly in other airports. I run into it constantly in our. It's, it's, con- it's at every airport. It's Wait, constant. Name where am I running into construction? I mean, there's traffic in LAX. LAX is LAX terrible were construction forever. The yeah, they were fixing like triple eight. You're also talking bag, about Austin Airport. Yeah. It's the airport you go through the most. So of course you're going to see these problems more often than I don't like see JFK. Them. I'm saying I don't see them at all when I go there because you don't go to JFK bucket. every week. I just, but I see it every time I go to Austin because that's so I should see it every time I go to <laughs> that's JFK. Why you go every damn week because every trip of yours. Starts or ends in Austin. Yeah, you can't fly anywhere without going to Austin Airport. Every time fly- I go through Austin, I see it. <laughs> but that's because that's, that's what, you're, what are you talking about? <laughs> Every time I go through Austin, for like the last five years, it's under construction. Isn't it weird that you never see construction at Jamaica Airport? I don't go How to Jamaica the- Airport. <laughs> that's why I go to JFK and I never see it. I always see it here and I never see it here. <laughs> Unbelievable. What, what are you talking about? I okay. have to go somewhere. I don't fucking do a loop around the state and land back <laughs> in the same weird? goddamn airport. I go somewhere else. Yeah, isn't it weird that you only vacuum your floor? <laughs> You're an idiot. I land in another place. And there would be construction in the other place at least once. That's all I'm saying. I never see it anywhere. From now on, your driving... To a different airport first. You, you can't fly from Austin anymore. You're going to drive to Houston. In and your analogy, I'm getting in my car and driving around my garage and then <laughs> stopping and getting out and going, I only see my garage. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Go fix your bell, cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. I do unbelievable. Fun, don't, yeah. I'm done with this. I'm like so right. ready right now. Let's uh let's wrap this up. Thanks everybody for watching. <laughs> Can't be in the post show. Oh, I'm gonna piss my pants. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, bye. <laughs> what an escalation. <laughs>